you, you said something that really alluded to a lot of what I set up in the beginning, and it's the Star Wars fantasy of our generation. Right. Star Wars fantasy was disposed of with Miami Beast. Mm -hmm. um, it suddenly became about, as you said, a reality. I mean, even if it was even if it was a fantasy reality, right. it, was, it was a fantasy steeped in But it's something you could relate to. You know, you can't relate to shooting laser guns in outer space. I mean, I have imagination as much as anybody, but, you know, but I do like couldn't relate to trying to you know kick it to some girls you know <laughs> when was your first attempt at production well kind of uh going back to what i said earlier as far as getting into electro music um there is a long time a long period of time where i was into hip-hop i loved hip-hop music and i liked industrial uh, you know, Nirvana, you know, I was into all kinds of different things, but to me, I just really missed electro music and it was a real thing. It wasn't like something where I'm saying that to, you know, try to, I really missed it. Like, you know, that there was not that music and it was like, I want to say 1997, which is a long time. <laughs> um, that I went to a club called The Edge in Fort Lauderdale, and I would go there for alternative music, et cetera, and at a certain time of the night, all of a sudden they started playing electronic music. And one night, me and my friends were drunk, and we stayed there longer than we were going to, and um, you know, that's the first time in many years that I heard an electro record. And as soon as I heard it, like, I was just again for the second time captured mo like totally enthralled with the fact that I heard that sound again and the next day I went to record store and instantly was trying to find all that music that I heard and so basically I started collecting records just to collect all the songs because to be honest with you I liked one out of every maybe 20 songs because it was all like techno house, you know, music in between. And, you know, I basically started collecting the records of what I liked. And when I would play them for my friends, they liked it too. So that's when it came to me that I was like, you know what, maybe I should try to be a DJ and be able to share this music with people. And people can experience what I'm experiencing. And from there, it was the same idea to become a producer. I wasn't hearing enough of the music that I liked and I just wanted to give it a shot. So that's how I started producing. You said 1997, that's a very pivotal year. Um, that's the year that the Sunshine State of Mind compilation came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dynamic Sunshine Florida. the Future. Um, yep. And Florida, sure. Right, right. That's another song as well. Um, which never came out, which I tried to put out a billion times. And Dave and Scott never wanted to cooperate with me for that because they didn't like the song. But it's a badass song. <laughs> it, it ushered in a new era. Yeah. It, 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 I, I see it as a one-two punch. Look to the Future was followed by Resident Alien. Mm -hmm. What do you want to tell us about Resident Alien? Resident Alien was um, started when I met James Wolfe and we had a common interest in electro music and at the time he was starting to produce his own stuff with Dave Noller and I got it in my mind to buy an MPC and try to produce and James Wolf, you know, him and I, whatever, we, we had a common bond and he said, hey, why don't we buy an MPC together? Because I didn't have the money, he didn't have the money, but if we put our money together, we could buy an MPC. So that's how Resident Alien started. and. Um, you know, originally, when we first started it, it was just a crazy collaboration of so many ideas and so many different thoughts and sounds that it just, you know, for a few songs there, it just became just like really experimental, uh, crazy output, you know, that even when I listen to it today, I'm like, wow, <laughs> it's pretty crazy stuff, you know, it's, it's, but it's, you know, it has a structure, but it's a lot of different ideas just getting thrown out there, you know, for fun. It wasn't intent, intended to, you know, be anything than just a couple guys starting to produce music and just having fun with it.
And it came out on Fragile Records. Yeah, which was James Wolfe's record label that I also started uh, managing, which was my first touch of running a record label. <laughs> what happened there with Fragile? Um, I mean, basically, you know, uh, I had a lot of uh, energy and I had a lot of uh, ideas and my motivation was a daily thing. And um, James Wolfe didn't share that, you know, in my opinion, he didn't share that same drive, that same motivation. For him, it was more like a hobby. And I got really serious about it because when I started producing music and when I started DJing, like for much of my life, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. But when I started producing, it snapped and I'm like, this is what I need to do. So for me, it became a career instantly. So, you know, we just weren't on the same page artistically and business wise. So I branched off and started doing exact from there. And when was that? Um, I think it was 2000 was, uh, I produced music is a drug, which was my first record. I produced it, actually started producing that late 99, finished it in 2000. And then 2001 is really when I hit the ground running when I did, uh, Electro Breaks Volume 6 on Street Beat, did a remix for Anthony Rother, um, came out with my very first album, full length album, exact album. Um, so yeah, I'm 2000 basically, but 2001 is really when I really went after it. 